Everybody, welcome. We are in Little Haiti, which is a neighborhood in Miami. Where we're going to right now is one of the best Haitian restaurants in the entire city. It's called Naomi's Garden. It opened originally as a catering company owned by an Israeli family, but has since become a really indispensable part of Little Haiti and Haitian culture due to the outstanding work and cooking from Haitian women who have been working there for decades. People come every day. People have been coming since they were children. Yes, Naomi's. Naomi's! Naomi's! So it's a really interesting story at this place. It's a really important place in the community and for the Haitian people. The food is supposed to be delicious, so let's head over there now, and I can't wait to try it. I understand that you and your brother were actually born in the building. Yeah. Tell me the story about how this place started. Okay, so my parents, they had a food truck selling healthy food all over town. The city said, hey, you guys need a commercial kitchen. That's how this works. They go, well, okay, fine, we'll do that, you know? They find this place through a friend. They took it, cleaned it up, built some rooms back there, had a big tent, and that's where we lived. We were conceived here, born here, and started working here. Wow. These ladies were hired, some of them before I was born. And Melissa was here when I was born. Janine was also here when my brother was born. When my mom was going to have us, they'd come out with tea and stuff like that. Wow. It was just kind of part of the family. They were cooking with my parents. The people in the neighborhood were noticing that something's going on. We have Haitian employees, we see them coming to work. Sure. Haitian people. So we focus on Haitian food. We eat here every day since 1980. I've been coming here. The food is great. You've been coming here every day since 1980? Yes. They have the perfect seasoning, the perfect ingredients that I'm familiar with back home in my country. So every time I come here, it makes me feel like I'm actually in Haiti. We're very thankful because there's not a lot of restaurants in the area that even have vegan varieties or vegetarian varieties. Oh, okay. So Are there a lot of vegetarians and vegans in, in Haiti? Yes, there's a lot of Rastas. There's a lot of Rastas. Yeah. A lot of us, yeah. If you're Rastafarian, what does that mean as far as what you can eat? Rasta only stick to our natural food, which is the earth. Fruit, vegetables, right. ground provision. Right, right. Did you grow up in Haiti? Did you grow up in Miami? I Did grew you? up here in Miami. Uh -huh. I came here when I was eight, going on nine. So basically, I've been here since then. I'm 39 years old. You look great for being 39. That's what being a vegan does. <laughs> That's what Naomi would do to you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, this is Jamie Mac. Jamie? Mac. Mac. And your name? Melissa Kran. <laughs> Lucas. Alchante. <laughs> Alchante. <laughs> Hi, Betty. Yes, Betty. I'm Lucas. Nice meeting you, Lucas. Uh, nice to meet you. At first, when the restaurant was first started, it was like one lady here. But it was from their church. Okay. And that lady was working here by herself. So. Yawan at the time asked the lady if she knows anybody that you know like to work here. So the lady went to the church and asked her, and then when she came here, she brought her, and then she brought me here. She brought you here. <laughs> so everybody just keeps bringing exactly. It. It's, uh, it's just one fam, yeah. Because of this area, they came up with the idea they should cook Haitian foods mm -hmm. because they will sell that a lot. Did that make people in the community happy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Till today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> what did she say? I feel like she's saying things. Very, very, very happy. <laughs> Why don't we dig in to the fried fish? This is an entire red snapper that has been deep fried. Oh yeah, that's good. It's got a little bit of a spice in the fry batter mixture, and so it gives it a little bit of a peppery kick. And then we've got the riz cole. So you can have rice and beans separately, or you can have the rice and beans is gonna be integral to any Haitian, Haitian meal. Sorry, I do have to talk briefly about roosters. This is what we're taught as kids, that the cock crows at sunrise. This is not true. <laughs> they do it all the time. 
all the time. I learned this the hard way when I lived in El Salvador and there were a lot of chickens and roosters around and I thought they only did it to wake up in the morning. I was like, okay, cool. I can handle that. I can wake up at sunrise. But they don't let you sleep. They go all night. It sort of drives you crazy until a few months go by and you sort of get used to it. Anyways, let's have some of the maiz coles. But this is cornmeal, essentially. It's got like a warm herbal flavor. It's comforting. Over here we have some of the chicken curry. It's gonna be a little bit sweet, a little bit earthy, a little bit nutty. And then this is gonna be cooked with some vegetables, with some onions, some celery. That's very good. We've got some spinach here that's sort of been cooked in fat. Nice and soft. I love the taste of spinach. So we have our legume, which is essentially a hearty vegetable stew. I mean, this is something you could eat every day. I really appreciate this tomatoey, oniony concoction. I have nothing bad to say about any of this. This is uh, hearty cuisine. What is a business, right? Because a business is just a name, a legal entity. I really think that a business is only about its people. Its people is what makes it what it is. People come here and they go, this is my restaurant. And I'm like, this is my restaurant. What do you mean, you know? <laughs> no, no, no. They feel yeah, they, connected. And they feel possession of it. They feel possession of the restaurant. And we closed for six months to do renovations two years ago. People would come here every day for those six months. Like, when are you going to open again? Wow. Somebody said to me, he said, my grandmother would not eat for four days because we couldn't think of this one. We're on a hunger strike. That was like, whoa. We didn't realize to that extent where somebody would just be like, I'm not gonna eat because right. I can't get that food. So it's a huge need after the hurricane. It's incredible. There's so many people didn't have power. We didn't have power. No. And the lady said, we have to open. And I was like, how? Yeah. Right? They're like, well, we'll cook outside, right. we'll do whatever. If people had money or didn't have money, they'd come here and they'd get hot food. You know what I mean? So it's like, it really is part of the community. If you've learned nothing from Dining on a Dime, it's that food is more than food. There's more to food than what it tastes like, than how you make it, and what it looks like. A lot of people don't like it when I start talking about other shit on this show, but I do it anyway because it's important to know how food brings people together, to know how food and restaurants can affect a community positively or negatively. This neighborhood has changed and is changing a lot. It's not quite Wynwood Design District realm of gentrification, but it's happening around here. And so it's important to remember that businesses like this are still here and have really been holding things together in the community in Little Haiti for many, many years. The fact that this place and these women that, that cook the food here are really able to fill this need and to serve the community in the way that they have for so many years really says a lot. So I think this is a really special place. You can obviously see how much it means to the people who live here. So that's all I'm gonna say. The food's great, come here, come, he come here and eat it. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Dining on a Dime from Naomi's Garden in Miami, Florida. If you'd like to watch more, please click here.